What is up, y'all? It's your boy, the Renegade, and Nickman, doing another video. And in this video, I'm here to give you the results for WWE SmackDown's Money in the Bank pay per view. And yeah, let's get right into it. Whatever, we're going to start off with the pre show and whatever, which was a tag team match putting together the newly formed hype bros of Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh, you know, the winner of the Under the Giant Battle Royal and whatever. I think these two are eventually going to break up again. One of them is going to go heel and betray the other. Fortunately, it didn't happen in this match and whatever, you know, they went against the Colognes, you know, Primo and Epico and whatever. And, uh, yeah, they came away with the win and whatever, and yeah, everything was hunky-dory. I think eventually these two are going to become number one contenders again for the WWE Tag Team Championship. And they're going to lose that match, ultimately having one betray the other and whatever, and then they're going to start a feud there. So yeah, that's my opinion on that one and whatever, and basically what happened. It was a pretty good match, you know, you know, for what it was, it was a pre-show match, so yeah, you can't expect too much on that. But next, we're going to go on to the pay-per-view, and we're actually starting off with the actual first ever female Money in the Bank uh, match and whatever. And we're going to crown the first ever Miz money in the bank in this match and the participants in this match are Carmella, Charlotte Flair, Natalia, Tamina and Becky Lynch. Carmella of course is with uh, James Ellsworth and whatever in her corner and that was really important whatever like I said in my uh, you know uh, 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 predictions and whatever I assume James Ellsworth was gonna like interfere and whatever because Pretty much he's the only manager in this whole match and that's exactly what happened. Because the end came where Becky Lynch was climbing the ladder and whatever, just about to win and whatever, get in the briefcase and whatever. James Ellsworth comes in and knocks uh, um, Becky Lynch off the ladder and whatever, basically tilting it over and whatever. She hits the ropes, knocks, knocks herself out. I think she knocked herself out the ring while you had it. Carmella is pretty much knocked out in the ring. He's trying to wake her up to climb the ladder but she won't get up so basically what he does is he climbs the ladder himself brings down the briefcase and tosses it to her the um referees argue for a bit but they ring the bell and your winner here of course is carmella just like i predicted but uh the caveat here is that shane mcmahon the commissioner of smackdown live and the returning general manager of you know, SmackDown Live, Daniel Bryan, they both said how controversial this is and how it's not going to stand and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know what I mean? What I think they're going to do with this is have James Ellsworth be the winner of this Money to Bank and whatever and do like a little storyline where like all the women are going to try to like trick him into, you know, give him them the um you know the briefcase and whatever of course he's with Carmella right now but that might change later on or whatever so that's the thing I think they're gonna make you know quote unquote James Ellsworth be a ladies man and whatever have the, all the ladies be all over him and whatever so you know I mean they could further that storyline but that's just my opinion comment down below and tell me what do you think they're gonna do with this what do you think about the match personally I think the match itself was pretty good for it being the first one Maybe next one, they're going to like do more high spots and whatever. But yeah, it was pretty good. Like A lot of people shitted on it, but I liked it. Next we have, for the WWE SmackDown Live Tag Team titles, we have the Usos, Jimmy and Jay Uso, putting their titles on the line against the New Day, which are Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods. I was wrong here. They didn't switch it up. It wanted up being Big E and Kofi Kingston. Just like 90% of the time anyway. But uh, yeah, it was pretty good match or whatever. It started off slow and whatever. But then like towards the middle, like it was lots of hot spots and whatever. I was watching with a friend of mine. Like he's really down on the New Day. He really doesn't like the New Day. Me personally, I really don't like the Usos. But, you know, towards the middle there, we kind of reached agreement where like, screw it. Whoever wins deserve this match. If you don't count the fact that the Usos left the ring and whatever and the new day won by disqualification you know what i mean that's kind of a bummer right there the match was getting hot you know what i mean it was awesome so like the ending here i didn't like but your winners here and via disqualification i mean not disqualification via count out mind you and not your new tech team champions 
the New Day. So obviously they're gonna have a rematch on you know the next pay per view, whatever SmackDown next pay per view is. So yeah, that's the thing. Next we have for the SmackDown Live women's title, we had the champion Naomi putting her title on the line against a I guess re debuting Lana and whatever. And yeah, like Lana did really well for herself in this match and whatever. A lot of people like was iffy on it and whatever, but I was like mildly impressed and whatever. She didn't like blow my mind or nothing like that, but she did really good for herself and whatever. Carmella showed up halfway through the match, that like she distracted Lana and whatever, kind of like threw her off her game when Lana was winning. And then like Naomi put on her finisher, which I believe is called Feel the Glow. And the tap out happened, and your winner here is still champion Naomi. So, yeah, that's the thing. So, eventually, it's gonna be Naomi versus uh, Carmella here. So, yeah. Next, we have for the WWE Championship, we have the champion, Jinder Mahal, with the Sing Brothers, putting his title on the line against Randy Orton, the Viper. And, you know, like before the match and whatever, they presented a bunch of legends at ringside, you know, Ric Flair, Sergeant Slaughter couple other people but most notably was um randy orton's father bob orton you know i mean ace if you will from that one wrestlemania he managed um well he was a bodyguard to roddy piper and i believe paul orndorff and whatever in the tag team match they had against hulk hogan and i want to say mr t i'm not 100 percent sure but uh yeah bob orton was there and whatever so obviously you know some shenanigans were gonna go down and whatever but yeah, we have Jinder Mahal putting his title on the line, and he had the Singh Brothers in his corner. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty good match and whatever. Randy pretty much dominated most of this match and whatever until the end where um, he hits the RKO, like really close to the um, ropes and whatever. Either the Singh Brothers grabbed his, like, um, Jinder Mahal's um, leg, or he put there himself. You know what I mean? Because the camera angle was not really, like, able to see what happened. But, you know what I mean? One or the other happened. But either way, he had his foot in the ropes. And the referee stopped the count and whatever. Randy was pissed because he, you know, assumed it was the Singh Brothers and whatever. Uh, the referee also thought it was the Singh Brothers and whatever. He was going to, like, disqualify Jinder Mahal and whatever. But Randy said, no, it's okay. Don't disqualify him. And Randy um, asked them to, like remove the Singh Brothers, which that's what the ref did, but before they left them, whatever, they started messing with, um, Bob Orton or whatever, they grabbed him by the, um, that shirt and whatever, and they was about to, like, beat him down or whatever. Randy Orton came out there, enraged, and beat both their asses, just like the last match and whatever, threw him through the table. The one guy, he got an RKO through a table and whatever, so, like, yeah, it was nuts and whatever. He goes back in the ring. Jinder Mahal basically by this point re recovered and whatever. He hits his finisher, which I don't even know the name of the move. I want to call it, like, it basically looks like, um, Teddy Biasi Jr.'s Dream Street finisher. And, you know, I'm in one, two, three. You're winning here and still champion. The Maharaja, the modern day Maharaja, if you will, Jinder Mahal. I'm ecstatic about this. I was scared. It was going to give it straight back to Randy. Because, like, you know, it's time for a change, you know what I mean? I like the fact that we got a new guy with the belt. And, you know what I mean, like, he's well-deserved. Like, he worked his ass off to be in this position. So, I'm happy about it. So, yeah, your winner here is Jinder Mahal. And finally, we have our main event of the evening, which is the actual Money in Bank match. And in this match are the participants of AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, the United States Champion Kevin Owens, and Baron Corbin. It was a really decent match and whatever, like, right from the get-go, from the entrances, like, it got crazy and whatever. Shinsuke Nakamura was, like, about the fifth guy coming out and whatever. You know, he was doing his entrance and whatever. Baron Corbin took him out. You know what I mean? So basically, it's a five-man match at this point. You know what I mean? They're brawling lots of high spots, as you would expect. Money in the Bank is no joke. Like, Money in the Bank is, to me, always an awesome match. But, uh, yeah, 
Baron Corbin basically took out everybody in the ring and whatever, about to climb, you know, the ladder and whatever, when Shinsuke Nakamura's music hit again, and he comes out, Shinsuke Nakamura beats his ass and whatever, like, King Sasha's out of nowhere, like, he basically dominated at this point or whatever, but at the end, the Lone Wolf, of course, prevailed, and your winner here in new Mr. Money the Bank is Baron Corbin. But uh, yeah, I love the pay-per-view. Like it, like it wasn't like mind-blowingly like awesome or whatever. But it was pretty decent, you know what I mean? It wasn't by any means a uh, payback or whatever. There was no House of Horrors in this match and in, in this pay-per-view, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people are saying this was the worst pay-per-view of the year and whatever. No, 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 no. Go back to payback. That that one match, in my opinion, ruined that whole pay-per-view. It made it the worst pay-per-view of the year thus far. You know what I mean? We still have Great Balls of Fire, which is a crappy name, but we have a banging main event and whatever. It's like they would say when they were trying to be cool off the chain. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? And if you don't know, the main event for that pay-per-view is a raw pay-per-view. It is the Beast incarnate Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman putting his WWE Universal title on the line against the Destroyer Samoa Joe. You know this match is going to be wild. But yeah, y'all, comment down below and tell me what did you think about the Money in the Bank pay-per-view and whatever, you know what I mean? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What would you change? You know, anything you want to comment down below, feel free to tell me and whatever. And again, I apologize for the quality of this match. All you see is the Money in the Bank logo and whatever, you know what I mean? I'm still recovering from being sick, you know what I mean? And like... My software is still not working, you know, I'll, you know, try to, like, fix that as soon as possible. But, yeah, y'all, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, you know what I mean? And, you know what I mean, if you're new and you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And until next time, y'all, peace.